birch. Okay, a couple obvious things. So this is all in contrast to paper. The, the leaf is going to be really different. This leaf is quite triangular and well, this one's been chewed off. So let's see. They have a very, very long very, very long extended tip pulled out. Very stretched out. This one's pretty good. This one would have been, but see it's broken off. So really it was like add that to it. Like that. So fit it off. So they have a very, very long extended tip on a triangular leaf. The paper birch is going to be a very ovate, oval, like a lot of things are. Okay. It's a bit very different than this. She can use the leaves, but I've been emphasizing the last couple of weeks they're going to be gone. Forget the leaves. The next thing you want to look at is the twig. Now, when we say twig, don't go reaching down here. Okay, that's a limb. Twigs, we're talking about the one-year-old material, newest stuff. You want to look at the twig and feel it between your fingers. They have very, very rough, raised-up lenses. I, I say it sort of seems like uh, salt on a pretzel stick. Very, very rough. That's going to be in contrast to paper. It's a real rough twig. Overall size. This is going to be a much smaller twig and bud than paper. Again, when you see both, then you can go, oh, yeah, I see. Wow. Paper is about everything about double. Then the number of catkins, which I said already, but let's get it all in one statement here. These tend to have ones, maybe an occasional two. You know, if you counted them all up and averaged them, you might get, you know, 1.1 1 .1 on average. And paper is going to have way many average like 3.8 like that. So when you see single male catkins, really rough twig, hey there's some leaves on the ground or maybe they're still on there and there are these triangles with the very long little curl at the end, like a Dairy Queen ice cream little twirl at the end. Be thinking, oh that's a gray. Now they will tend to have grayer bark, but be very careful on the color of the bark. Uh, you know, if you, if you uh, looked at 100 of each of them, yeah, the paper is going to have whiter bark and the gray is going to have grayer. But there are paper birches that have gray bark and there's gray birches that have very, very white bark. This little one is just starting to go into its white pattern. So I, wouldn't even, I don't know if you can still even discern how white it will be yet. We have to wait maybe another at least a year before it's, we'll see how white Like that at the very, very base where I was pulling weeds, it's getting pretty white. So as the rest of it gets bigger in diameter, I suspect it's going to be pretty white. And so you'd be like, oh, okay, it's not even gray. So watch the color of the bark. Don't use that. Another thing that I'd have sort of in a sub list, gray birch, the bark does not tend to peel. And paper birch peels a little bit. And I'm saying a little bit, but you know how river birch was all peely and shreddy? Remember that? Very, very. Paper's not like that either. In reference to contrast to river birch, you'd say neither of them are so different. But this hardly peels at all, and you'll see a little bit of peeling on the paper. But I would use leaf when they're there, bale catkins, ones, and two, maybe a two occasionally, and the very, very rough twig and size of the bark are what I would be using. Uh, just a little bit more about it. Uh, neither of these, the gray and the paper, are native here. They're more northern. You know, they're Canadian and are New England and Lake States. Uh, the range is north of here. Of the two, gray birch is a lot smaller. It's a, a short-lived tree. You know, some, like a short-lived tree would be like our lifespans. This, this could even be dying when it's 50 years old. It's a very, very short lifespan. 